Hi, everybody. Thanks for inviting me here. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I represent Polins. Polins is a, is a light uh, research center based in the Veneto region and was founded by uh, Kafoska University from Venice. And well, that is our headquarter is a plus A, plus a uh, energy class building. And our goal is to help companies of the area, we are talking about the Veneto region on eastern part of Italy, to innovate uh, their business model. <coughs> so we are talking about this area, uh, eastern part of Re Veneto region, northern Italy, um, <coughs> along the coast. We have um, um, some main sectors. Um, tourism, for sure, is the most important sector. Here we have uh, 14. 14% uh, of the regional GDP produced um, okay, here in, along the coast. We, here is 14% of the, region, the um, uh, regional GDP is produced here. Um, tourism is, the, is uh, one of the main sector together with build, the building sector that was actually was born um, linked to the tourism development in the 60s and the 70s. And <clears throat> this is one of the less industrialized area of the region. Maybe you know Veneto for their industries. And here we have a lot of agriculture uh, yet. <clears throat> These are some pics I took um, flying to Albina yesterday just to show you what we are talking about. This is. Caorle, this is Valle Vecchio Reserve, is a natural area. Uh, you can see here. Um, this is the inland. Uh, it's not very clear, but uh, we are set here in the middle of nowhere, like a research center. And uh, you can see the agriculture is still um, very present. Here we have Bibione and Lignano, Grado. We are already in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia region. Um, we should have more. The Marano Lagoon is another lagoon in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia. So uh, um, I totally agree with the previous speaker. Um, we are um, going toward new scenarios. For example, we talked about climate change. <clears throat> this area will be hit very hard by the climate change issue because uh, this area is mainly below the sea level. So this is, these are the, the forecast for the end of the century. Uh, almost the, the, all the area will be flooded by the sea by the end of the century. I repeat, here we produce 14% of the regional GDP. So we have to think about very, very quickly about this topic. Still, there are people that don't believe in global change, in global warming, <laughs> but reality is far away. Uh, here, we don't see uh, the trends in um, resources consumption, but uh, we all know where the prices are going. Energy is the main issue. We are living an era, an era of cheap energy based on fossil fuels. We can enter a new, in a new Prospero, uh, prosperous area, but based on renewables and on efficiency, not for sure on, renew on uh, fossil fuels. The interesting thing is that we are moving also from uh, linear trends to exponential trends, positively and negatively. Uh, as you see, the consumption is skyrocketing, and this is a problem. The global warming is skyrocketing, but also, and I want to be uh, optimist, the energy, the renewable energy production is skyrocketing along the world. Um, most, of, most of the times without incentives. So this is basically drive by uh, cost um, reduction that are uh, at the same time redu uh, reducing at uh, uh, exponential speed. 
So we have problems, but we have opportunities. And this is what we try to, this is the German situation. This uh, speed rates brings to price uh, um, diminishing that can go to zero in some period of the year. In Italy also, producing with solar is costless. And so, again, new opportunities here. We don't see the slide, but I want to be, I want to tell Jan that uh, beside of political um, uh, delays, we on the field as entrepreneurs are working very strongly, for example, on the EU, EU uh, 2050 roadmap. We strongly believe that we can um, uh, create a low, uh, a zero carbon uh, uh, energy system, a zero carbon economic system. And I will show you in some minutes how. For sure, efficiency is the key. We are. We all agree on this topic, so I will, I will skip that. So what we did uh, in the area, basically, we asked ourselves if we, how we could help companies to innovate their business model through uh, sustainability. And so we started uh, 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 a, um, a path that cannot be, that maybe now could um, look uh, rational but in the beginning was not that rational because we are not from the touristic sector. We are, uh, we come from the business management, the business management uh, um, research and consultancy. So for us, uh, the tourism is a, a sector, is a particular sector, very hard for us to enter and to work in because there are different frameworks. But uh, I want to just very quickly share the sustainability rationale I, I just drove down some minutes ago because we have to agree on this basically every business has its own uh, balance made by revenues costs and profits if the, the business is good sustainability can work both on the cost sides or on the revenue sides it can help you reduce energy costs resources costs waste management costs, financial costs. It can reduce, uh, it can assure you your sourcing, so uh, in increase your sourcing security. It can help you to compliance with the regulations. And on the other side, it opens you to new markets, also in the touristic sector. The demand is changing. There are many, many people, as Jan, asking for green hotels, uh, slow mobility area, uh, natural area where to spend some, some days. So new markets, evolving demand. Reputation is very important for your image, but also for the people you bring in your team to work with, to solve problems, to uh, create new ideas. To reduce risks, you know these guys from Greenpeace that can put a flag on your um, on your um, shop or on on your um, plant and say you are polluting the world and you should do something. And immediately you get one ten thousand emails from activists and people all around the world and, and saying you should do this. Maybe also as a um, member of the European Parliament or. That's, that's great. I mean, Greenpeace is one of the main uh, drivers that are uh, changing the, the competition towards sustainability. So, the future is not clear because we have uh, exponential uh, changes and um, there are huge problems. So, it's very hard to forecast. In these situations, the best thing to predict the future is to invent it. You cannot know what is going to happen. If you decide what to do, you can achieve it. If you wait the, the events, you can get the, whatever, whatever, okay? So we strongly believe that envisioning, I'm sorry because over there, there's a, there's a sign that say, envisioning is the first step you have to do. To imagine within 10 years what 
your business will do, how your business will be, in a sustainability, in a sustainable way. What does it mean? So we started a three-step project that uh, was made by an envisioning step, a supporting step, and an achieving step, and I will uh, explain you. The first step was to uh, analyze the area. We, we analyzed the area and we involved 22 municipalities and um, five strategic sectors that are the previous, I told you, tourism, building, sector, agriculture, manufacturing, and mobility. And we set out 53 strategic options for the companies to move into towards sustainability. General option, of course, because we, we didn't enter in the business model. But we say, look, you have these opportunities. The world is moving toward these trends. You should uh, get the chance to improve your business model, your you know, competitiveness, by uh, working on sustainability. So what came out that uh, it can be interesting for this area that, uh, was that tourism can not only work on sustainability for the, uh, for the sector, but also as a leader for other sectors to move towards sustainability, because it stimulates other sectors to think uh, about new products and new service to help tourism to uh, raise up uh, its, uh, its uh, sustainability level. Hmm? So the second phase was supporting uh, the, the companies, mainly small and medium enterprises, to start revisiting their business model. So we, we organized several workshops uh, on sustainability in the tourism sector, in the manufacturing sector, in the agricultural sector, just to spread information and raise up awareness about the opportunities on the opportunities. And this was made with the regional and European funds. Two projects were presented. So we, we conducted strategic analysis on some companies. We organized workshops. Um, and help uh, Smith to, to revisit their model. Five minutes, thanks. Um, many Smiths, many small and medium enterprises uh, participated, very few from the touristic sector. And that's not surprising me because um, the, the framework of, their, of this sector, I mean the business model, and the management models are very different from the, the other sectors. So they are not used to participate, to workshop, or to share ideas, or to, um, to go through a strategic analysis, at least in, the, in that area. I don't know here, but. Um, and another interesting achievement was that uh, at least three startups um, were born from this project, from the other sectors, but to serve tourism to work on sustainability. Um, one startup uh, is in the field of electric mobility, one in, uh, in the remodeling of the uh, um, tourism uh, infrastructures, and one uh, is developing new uh, mobile houses for campings, you know, new sustainable mobile houses. Um, a Biro is uh, an electric vehicle. The startup was born in 2009. They come from the tractor industry. They produce cabins for the tractors in the agricultural sector. And they say, look, when we go to the sea, we have many problems to park our cars. How can we do something about that? And the guys that you see in the picture came out in transforming the cabin, you can see part of it, I'm sorry, in this vehicle. As you, as you can see, it's a, it's, a cab, it's a tractor cabin, but it's electric. It can park in one meter. Uh, this is a, a, another idea he got, is to make the battery 
mobile, so you can bring it to your office or to your home, and so infrastructure for recharging vehicle is not a problem anymore. You can charge it everywhere. There's no problem. So they 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 done very well. They are small, but they reach 1.5 um, million euros turnover, and now they are producing 300 units per year. That is pretty interesting for a small, very small company. 70% uh, of the turnover is made abroad. <clears throat> eCube is um, a startup founded by a, a building constructor and um, um, HV uh, installer. Um, and its, its goal is to help uh, hotels and uh, um, apartments owner to remodel their uh, buildings in a sustainable way. So they use the LEED scheme. I don't know if you if you are familiar with the LEED. The LEED is a um, certification system. Uh, it's international and helps you to uh, build or remodel. Um, a building in a complete sustainable way, like uh, well, very energy efficient with uh, natural materials uh, connected to um, sustainable mobility. It works on air quality inside and, and many other topics. So they started to uh, work on some um, intervention, remodeling the, the buildings in a very uh, deep, uh, sustainable manner. The last one is. Uh, another company just started um, is from the building sector uh, also, and um, they started to build uh, houses with wood, and they came to this idea to produce sustainable mobile houses made by wood and they and in a modular way, so you can combine these modules. Um, Depending on your your needs in the in the in the structure, and mainly we are talking about campings, um, and they just started to uh, to furnish uh, at the first camping with 25 units this year. So to conclude my intervention, I think I'm in time. All ideas started from traditional sector agriculture and building sector to solve problems or catch new opportunities, but in the tourism sector, not in their sector. Older entrepreneurs are in their 30s or 40s, so they are very young. All ideas refer to sustainability as the solution to solve the problem. So in this case, sustainability is the solution for another sector. And uh, of course, um, is an idea for them to uh, improve or to um, innovate their business. None of them benefits of public funds, except for our activity of supporting them in developing the idea. But, but they don't get fund to build uh, uh, the unit or to build uh, the, the car. And it's pretty interesting, so it's, co it's coming from the bottom. But. Each of them would speed up a lot if supported by appropriate policies, like, I mean, sustainable mobility in congestioned, area, in congestioned areas. If this area decides that you cannot enter with cars anymore, but just only with electric cars, these guys would uh, do much better, and many others probably would um, uh, join the, the challenge. And many tourists, for sure, would appreciate the fact to spend one week in a, an area where you don't have to worry about cars, your and for your children, for example. Okay, so policies are very important. You cannot see here <laughs> too many light, but you can help tourism sector. This, is, this was, of course, our experience as a, a business consultancy for center. Um, you can help touristic sector to raise up its sustainability levels, stimulating related sectors to develop new products and services. So you get two results. You work on sustainability, sustainable tourism, but you work on also on um, uh, sustainable development in an area, link different sectors that are connected by 
supply chains, but many times don't see the opportunities to collaborate <coughs> on this topic, okay? So I think this can be interesting for, for the public side also. Okay, thank you, I'm sorry for the, the slide problem.